Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. And how many people do you think there are in the world today that are full of bitterness, they're angry, they've got strife in their life, they're walking around offended about something that somebody did, they're planning on getting revenge. But you know what? We have an antidote right here in the Word of God, forgiveness. Well, thank you for joining us today on Enjoying Everyday Life. You know, the Word of God is so wonderful, and it does help us enjoy every single day of our life because it teaches us godly principles that helps us overcome everything that comes against us. And today I want to talk to you about poisons and antidotes, but I'm not talking about something physical. I'm talking about your soul. Do you know that your soul can get poisoned. For example, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness poisons our soul. It makes us unhappy. But God has an antidote in His Word for every single thing that tries to poison our soul. If you had a poisonous snake bite you, the first thing you would do would be head for the hospital to get the antidote because you wouldn't want to die. Well, we need to be smart enough to learn that when the enemy does something that poisons our soul when we do something that poisons our soul. The first thing we need to do is run to God's Word to get the antidote. And I actually have something here for every single letter of the alphabet, so you're going to need to just be patient and really pay attention, but I think you're going to learn something today that's going to help you. There's no problem that you have that the Word of God cannot solve. Now let me repeat that. There's no problem that you have that the Word of God cannot solve. So for example, bitterness, resentment, anger, strife, offense, and revenge. Now there's one antidote that would get rid of all of those poisons. And how many people do you think there are in the world today that are full of bitterness, they're angry, they've got strife in their life, they're walking around offended about something that somebody did, they're planning on getting revenge. But you know what? We have an antidote right here in the Word of God, forgiveness. It's so simple just to forgive. Do yourself a favor and forgive and get that poison out of your soul. Now, this says, take for bitterness and resentment as often as needed until your symptoms are gone and the refills are unlimited and the doctor is Jesus. I just love sharing this message this way because the Word of God is what heals us and brings restoration in our lives. Okay, selfishness, stinginess, and greed. Well, the antidote for that is generosity. I don't know exactly where they all are, so I'm not going to stop to look for each one of them, but you get the point. Insecurity, rejection, and abandonment is God's unconditional love. The love of God right here, I tell you, it cures. You can take it for guilt or shame as often as needed until your symptoms are gone. Now, you know, that's the way we do medicine for our physical body. I mean, if you're sick, you're in pain, you go to the doctor, and he gives you a prescription. You don't waste any time. You go straight to the drugstore and you wait in line until that thing is filled. And sometimes you don't even wait until you get home to take it. You may already open it up and take it in the car. And you'll take it as often as they tell you to take it. And if you're still not completely well, by the time that bottle's gone, you'll get it refilled and you'll take it some more. Well, sometimes when we have poison in our soul, especially if it's been there a long time, we have to stick with the Word for a while to get all that junk out of us. I was sexually abused in my childhood, and I, you don't get over something like that just by reading a couple of scriptures. Many times you have to do it over and over and over and over. But just listen to this. Insecurity, no, we did that one. Worry and anxiety, you can take, uh-oh, the peace of God right here. Everything you need in God's medicine cabinet. 
For sin, we have the blood of Jesus. For fear, we have courage. For stress and burnout, we have wisdom and balance. God's Word teaches us wisdom, and it teaches us how to live balanced lives so we're not worn out and exhausted all the time. What about failure, disappointment, and loss? You know what the Word of God has for you? You know what Jesus has for you? A new beginning. You never run out of new beginnings with God. He's the God of a second chance, a third, a fourth, and a fifth, and however many you need until you get it right. Failure, disappointment, and loss. I think I did that one, a new beginning. Sadness, depression, joy. Burdens and cares, God's rest. A broken heart, says in Isaiah that he gives us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Stupidity, we have God's chastisement. And what I mean by that is God will deal with us when we're even about to do something that's unwise or sometimes in the middle of doing something that's unwise. You get this little check in your heart like, I know I shouldn't be doing that. Well, you know, most of us are not real good at listening to that in the very beginning, but the more experience you have with God, the more you will listen right away. Take your medicine early. Don't wait until you're so sick that somebody's got to drag you to the Bible to get your answer. For foolishness, we have God's wisdom. For weakness, we have God's strength. Any need you have, you can pray. The fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Yes, you are made right through the blood of Christ if you're a believer in Jesus. Your righteousness is not based on you doing everything right. It's a gift from God. And the more you receive that gift and believe it and walk in it, the more you will do things right. For doubt, we have faith. For trials and tribulations, we have the promise in God's Word that all things work for good to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Now, just, just listen to this. This is so amazing to me. I never get tired of hearing this. God's Word has an answer in it for every problem that you have. You don't have a problem that Jesus is not the answer for. Murmuring and complaining, you can trade that in for a thankful attitude. Stubbornness and rebellion submission, guilt and shame, righteousness, discouragement, hope, sickness, healing, pride, humility, poverty, prosperity. For death, you get life. And for mental difficulties, the Bible tells us that we have been given the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians 2.16. Isaac Leeser's translation of Exodus 15, 26 reads, I, the Lord, am your physician. And I want to add to that. And the medicine that he gives to heal us is his word. But you know what? For medicine to work, you have to take it as it is prescribed. If you're sick physically and you're hurting, you don't just take something, oh, once a week for a few minutes on Sunday morning. You don't just take it when you happen to think about it and just let it go the rest of the time. No, you are, you are diligent. I mean, you, you take that medicine, and sometimes you can't wait for it to get to be time to take your medicine. And we need to be the same way about the Word of God. Love God's Word and give it a place of regular importance in your life. It's amazing how many answers you find for the things that are trouble for you in the Word of God. Set apart a time to read and study God's Word on a regular basis. God has given us so many ways now to get the Word of God into us, into our soul. I mean, you can listen to it. You can watch it. You can listen to the Bible on CDs. or You, you, can, you can download so many different Bible teachers and preachers on your computer and just watch anytime you want to. You've got multiple translations of the Word of God, and then there's all kinds of books written about the Word that explains it even more. And, you know, let's just say maybe you enjoy my TV program, but you only watch it whenever you happen to flip past me on the TV. Well, you know what? If you're sick in your soul, if you have any of these things that I've talked about, 
the word that I share here daily is a healing. It's a medicine for your soul. So why not just make a decision that you're going to watch it every day? And if you can't be home when the program's on, you can always record it and watch it later. And in addition to that, there are many, many wonderful, gifted, anointed Bible teachers and preachers that you can listen to the same as you can listen to me or to watch. God's medicine has unlimited refills, you know. Um, I don't know about you, but when I get a regular medicine, if it says no refills, I prefer to have one that says unlimited refills or refill as often as needed or 12 refills. You know, even if we don't think we're going to need it, we like to have those refills. Well, you know what? God's Word is always there to refill us in whatever area that we've been having problems. But remember, medicine takes time to work. You don't take one dose of medicine and expect to be well. You take it over and over and over. And I know some of you have some very serious situations in your life. Maybe some of you have been hurt like I was as a child. You were abused or abandoned in some way. You've been rejected. You, there's all kinds of things that can happen. You've lost your job and you're discouraged or, or you're afraid. Or, I mean, problems are abundant. Jesus even said, in the world there will be tribulation, but cheer up, I have overcome the world. So see, even right there, he's giving us the answer. You're going to have tribulation, but joy can break the power of that sadness off of your life. And no matter what has gone on in your life, or no matter what is going on right now, I have been walking with God many, 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 many years. But let, let's just say for at least 45 years, I've been really after it. I mean, studying daily and really trying to learn. And I had so many problems when I started taking God's Word as my medicine. And I can tell you that my life is so good now. And you know, when I say that, don't be jealous and say, well, that must be nice for you. I had to put the time into learning the things. I had to take my medicine, and I had to take it regularly. And the good news is, is once you learn what medicine to take for what soul poison, you can go back and retake it anytime you want to. You know, there's times now when I maybe feel angry about something and I don't just wish it would go away. I open up my Bible and I look at scriptures like, for example, in Ephesians 4 that tells us not to let the sun go down on our anger. I, if I'm feeling, you know, guilty, I know to go to Romans 8 where it says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I know to go to Ephesians chapter 1 and 3 and read about how much God loves me and how his love is unconditional. I'm telling you, if you have a Bible in your house, you have got the answer to every problem that you have in your soul. And I can also tell you that having poison in your soul is possibly even worse than having poison in your physical body. There's nothing worse than putting a smile on your face and going out every day and trying to make everybody think that you're fine when inside you're bruised and bleeding and hurting and miserable and sad and depressed. Don't live a phony life where you're pretending that everything is okay while you've got all these issues going on on the inside that you really, really, really need healing for. Give the Word of God first place in your life. Don't make it be something that you only spend time doing when you happen to have the time or don't know what else to do. If you're going to go to church, don't sit there while the pastor's teaching the Word and just let your mind wander off into something else. Pay attention. Take some notes. Go home and rethink about what he taught and make sure that you're applying it to your life. I'm really asking you today to get more serious about the power that's in God's Word. You know, God's Word, and this is the thing you have to understand, God's Word has power inherent in it. So what that means is when I'm speaking God's words to you like I am today, 
There's power inside these words. And if you listen diligently and you believe what the word says, it will heal your soul. It's miraculous. The Word of God has miraculous power in it. It renews your mind. You know, God has a wonderful plan for your life. Do you know that? I don't know what you might be going through right now, but I can guarantee you that many people watching me, you are, you are really hurting right now. And there may be others that you just feel downright hopeless. You just think, I don't know if anything good is ever going to happen in my life. Well, you know what? I was like that at one time. I actually was so bad that I expected bad things. I was afraid to hope because I had hoped before and been so disappointed that I just, ex just waited for the next bad thing that was going to happen. But God has changed me through His Word. And you know what? When I woke up this morning, I said good morning to the Lord. And then I said, this is a good day. Something good is going to happen to me today. And something good is going to happen through me today. And you know what? I believe that because I know that God is good. I don't have to be doing everything right for God's favor and grace to be in my life. I need to love Him and want His will. And I'm telling you right now, God has got a good plan for your life. But the Bible teaches us in Romans 12 that if we want to experience this good plan, that our mind must be renewed, and the way you renew your mind is with the Word of God. Every time you sit down and you read the Word or you're driving in your car and you listen to the Word or you take the time to watch some good teaching or preaching on your TV set, every single time you do that, it's helping to change your mind. And really, when your mind is completely renewed, the enemy cannot control you anymore. Your eyes will be opened. You'll have revelation and, you know, you'll be like, I can't believe the way that I was living and how miserable I was when the answer was there all the time. But remember, it's not a matter of just reading it one time and then thinking, well, why am I not healed? I remember a woman who came to me one time in a meeting and she said, um, uh, stood at the altar and put her hands on her hips and she said, I want my money back. And I thought, what are you talking about? She said, I've come to, uh, for two weeks, I've been doing this. I've been listening to you and I've come to two of your conferences and I've given offerings like you said and nothing has changed in my life. You know what? I didn't want to be rude, but it was all I could do to keep from laughing because she had no concept of what I was saying. She thought that she'd found some kind of magic formula that she could have invested maybe 50 years in a sinful lifestyle and had created all these problems in her life and now she wanted God to fix them in two weeks. Well, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, that's not the way that it works. But let's just say that maybe you've never heard this before. You just happened on this program and you thought, well, I'll just, you know, see what she's got to say. And you, you think, yep, that's me. I'm, I'm bitter. I'm angry. I'm resentful. I'm depressed. I've got, yes, Joyce, I've got almost every one of those problems that you read off in the beginning. Well, why not start today going in the other direction? Everything's not going to get turned around overnight, but at least you won't be getting deeper and deeper and deeper in problems every time you apply the Word of God to your life. And it's not just about hearing it. You have to do it too. The Bible says to be a hearer and not a doer, you're only deceiving yourself by reasoning contrary to the truth. If you continue in my word, Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, it's inferred there that if you continue in the word of God, you'll learn the truth, and if you apply the truth to your life, it will set you free. Obviously, we did bad things that got us into problems. Now we need to do the right things to get us out of those problems. God's word is so, so powerful. Proverbs 4 20 through 22, says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ears to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. Now listen to this. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. That means your mind, 
your emotions, your spiritual life. I had relational problems. I didn't know how to have healthy relationships with anybody. And now I know how to treat people. I know how to make friends. I know how to stay away from wrong people that will poison my life. Psalm 10720, I love this. It says, he sends his word and heals them. And I believe that's what I'm doing right now. I believe that I am sending the word of God into your heart, into your home, and I believe the words that I'm speaking have healing power in them that can and will change your life if you become a serious student of the Word of God. In Matthew 8, 8 and 13, the centurion replied, Lord, I don't deserve to have you come under my roof, but just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. This centurion had gone to Jesus and asked for healing for his servant who had served him well and he loved him and cared about him. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And this centurion said, no, no, you don't have to, you don't have to do that. I'm not even worthy for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. You know, it would help you if you just sit on your couch or in a chair somewhere and just let these words just bathe your soul in light. The word of God is powerful and it will set you free. You know, we do better at taking natural medicine than we do at taking God's medicine. If you have a headache, how quickly do you run for the Tylenol bottle or the Aleve bottle or whatever it is you might happen to take? Pretty quick. And if we can't find any, we'll go to the store and get some. How many of you take medicine every day and you're very diligent to get it refilled on time or early if possible? We love to get our prescriptions refilled early because then we might get a few extra pills that we'll have at the end of the month. We keep trying to heal our physical bodies while the poison in our soul continues making us physically sick. Did you understand what I said? So many of the physical problems that we have that are real are caused by the poisons in our souls. Do you know if you hold unforgiveness against someone for a long period of time? I know a woman who had arthritis. And she told me that after she forgave her mother-in-law, who she really had something against, that the arthritis pain in her body began to improve and improve. Now, I'm not saying that everybody who has arthritis is angry or you're holding unforgiveness, but I'm just trying to make the point that all of these poisons in our soul, they put a lot of stress on us. God never intended us to live that way. And the more stress you have in your life, the sicker you're going to be. God wants us to rest, to be at peace, and to let him do great things in our life. The Bible tells us to build our house on a rock. You know the story about the three little pigs that most kids learn? Well, you know, that's about three pigs and a, a big bad wolf and Two of them didn't build their houses correctly and the wolf huffed and puffed and blew their house down. But the one who built his house on the rock and made it strong, the wolf huffed and puffed and he could not blow his house down. If you build your life and your home on the word of God, the enemy will not be able to destroy it. Let me tell you something. God loves you so much. I mean, maybe, you, maybe nobody's ever told you that. But I'm telling you today that God loves you so much. And you are very special to him. Perhaps you don't even have a relationship with Jesus. You're not even 100% for sure what I'm talking about. Well, there's a phone number on your screen. You can call, talk to one of our operators and say, how can I have a relationship with Jesus? And they'll talk you through it and pray with you and you can begin today having a new life with Christ. And I'm not talking about religion or church attendance. I'm talking about a personal, personal, deep, intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Jesus died for each and every one of us. He paid for our sins. And if we believe and put our faith in him, we can go free and we can be made well. So please get more of the word, listen to it, read it, watch it, and let God begin to change your life. 
Now, God bless you, and you give us a call if you want to talk more about how you can have a relationship with Jesus. Thank you. Sometimes when you're believing God for something, don't always think it's just going to show up in the mailbox or fall out of the sky. Walking with God means sometimes you've got to wait on Him for wisdom and you've got to take a step of faith and do what you feel is right. The next step. Meer leerzame impulsen vind je op het Joyce Meyer YouTube kanaal. Zoek het maar eens op. They know what abuse is, they know what trauma is, they know what it is to struggle with identity, they know what it is to face conflict in their lives, they know what it is to struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness. And Joyce's story and her experience is so particularly relevant to them because they understand that, hey, this lady knows my context. I, I, I might not be able to speak her language, I might not be able to understand her country or her, her culture, but she knows my language of pain and abuse and hurt. And her testimony in their lives gives them hope for their own lives. If, if it can happen for that lady, it could happen for me. Being committed. Being committed is very important. Mobile phones being used by almost everyone on the continent. In fact, there are more mobile phones on the continent of Africa than there are people at the moment. Uh, so this is a really exciting platform, and people are accessing the internet. Well over 85% of people uh, through their mobile phones first. So we've got several pages recently that have been opened up in Nigeria, uh, several that have been opened up in Ethiopia, several in uh, uh, Kenya as well, and we're getting exciting responses from that. So it's one way that we can communicate directly to people uh, on a regular basis, but at the same time, where there are physical needs, we respond particularly to those through feeding programs and water wells and anti-human trafficking wells work and skills development programs for young girls that prevent them from being sold into child marriage and secure their education for the rest of high school. I think for me, the thing that really touches my heart is in the midst of all the numbers, because we do, we work with some uh, crazy numbers and I think we get blown away uh, listening to some of the reach of people. Um, I mean, you know, the millions and the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, those figures that come back. Uh, what always catches me off guard a little bit and gets me uh, overwhelmed is when you have those one-on-one -on -one encounters with people and each and every one of them has a unique story, each and every one of them uh, has a unique uh, set of challenges that they've got to overcome, a unique set of pain. Uh, but God's particular love for each individual in each country, in each culture, in each language is what blows me away. God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. You know, I don't think we can fully understand how important it is to know the Word of God and apply it to our lives. 
And that's why I'm so very excited about the Biblical Commentary series. And I believe that this can help anybody who thinks they don't know how to study or they can't understand the Bible when they do study it. It's very down to earth, very practical. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Bestudeer samen met Joyce dit geliefde Bijbelboek om essentiële waarheden te vinden en ze praktisch toe te passen in je leven. Bestel jouw exemplaar online via joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.